What's up, y'all? You're watching You In Your Mind, and I'm your host, Eric, and today we're going to talk about one member, one vote, and what type of ramifications it can have for a union organization. There have been a few historical union, union organizations that actually allowed for one member, one vote, and reformer candidates uh, ended up winning those elections. In other words, the membership, the rank and file, felt like the union needed a new direction and they were actually given a chance to vote for a new direction. Uh, it's something that I think every labor organization should encourage and embrace one member, one vote, because it's the best way to get uh, representation of what the body wants. Now, this is an article out of More Perfect Union. It's by Jonah Furman, who is a awesome uh, follow on Twitter. He, he really does a great job of reporting on labor. Um, but here we go. Let's get into it because this is uh, pretty interesting. Rail workers oust union president who backed labor deal. Eddie Hall, a working engineer who pushed for a more aggressive stance in contract showdown, wins upset victory to lead major rail union BLET. In a stunning upset, the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen the 28,000 member union of railroad workers has elected a new president, Eddie Hall, a local officer out of Division 28 in Tucson, Arizona, won against incumbent Dennis Pierce with 53% of the membership wide vote. Hall will take office on January 1st, pending official certification of the results, and will lead the larger of the two unions that make up the Teamsters Rail Conference. The surprise victory is the latest fallout from a national freight rail showdown in which some 60,000 rail workers had a contract imposed on them. In the BLET, the second largest union involved in negotiations, members ratified a deal, but many members were unhappy with the outcome. In an interview, Hall said his election spoke to rank and file frustrations that leadership failed to listen to the membership throughout negotiations. We have a union, but members are not involved, he said. I'm hoping to get out and listen to the membership. The BLET was one of three unions that came within hours of striking in September before reaching a last minute tentative agreement with heavy involvement from the Biden White House and Secretary of Labor, Marty Walsh. In June, the BLET took a strike vote, its first such nationwide vote in over a decade. Members returning ballots voted 99.5% in favor of striking. For months, the BLET and other unions had pushed for 15 paid sick days for rail workers. Currently, railroaders get none. In those final hours before their strike deadline on September 15th, the union agreed instead to accept three unpaid sick days with 30 days notice. I have never known 30 days in advance that I was going to be sick to be taken on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, even better. I definitely don't know when I'm going to get sick on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, 30 days in advance with Dennis Pierce standing next to him in the Oval Office. Joel Biden told the press, they feel good. These guys, by the way, they're still standing, but they should be home in bed 20 straight hours of negotiations. I want to thank business and labor. Pierce then advocated for his membership to support the deal. This is a very familiar thing that happens with uh, elected labor representatives when they go out and negotiate a deal and then they come back to the membership and they try to sell that deal to the membership. Um, you shouldn't have to sell a good deal. A good deal, you don't need to sell that. If it's a good deal, people can recognize it's a good deal and they'll vote for it. When you got to sell whatever the hell it is that you negotiated, that wasn't a good deal. Contracts between the railroads and their employees have never had sick time, he said in a separate interview. Can you imagine? Because it's never been done before, we can't never try it. Can you imagine? What if the Wright brothers were like, you know what, nobody's ever flown, flown anything before. We should just not try it. That's the stupidest thing I think I've ever heard. There are a lot of industries that don't have it in their contract. That's good. So if other people don't have it, we shouldn't worry about it. Asked if he would support the deal, Pierce replied, I probably would. Pierce was indeed able to get the contract ratified, but it may have cost him his job. That's the problem. 
when you have a labor body that's not involved, it's easy to dupe folks because they're not involved. So it's easy. They hear it coming from a voice, someone who seems like they are uh, in charge and in the know, trustworthy, and that person is telling them this is the best deal we could have gotten you. The very best in the business. Best in the business. And then you vote for it, and then later on you see the what it actually is, and you're like, oh, this isn't that good at all, actually. Maybe get more involved so you know what's going on. The new rail union leader. Eddie Hall is work is a working engineer on the Union Pacific Railroad. Based in Tucson, Arizona, he's worked on the rails for 28 years and has been a local union officer for the past 12. He says he never considered trying to move up the union ranks until last fall. As members grew frustrated with the stalled negotiations process, Hall's District 28 held a meeting where they voted to send a letter to Dennis Pierce, asking him to come down and, for lack of a better word, explain himself. Pierce, Pierce headed to Tucson in February of this year and members weren't satisfied with his responses. That's when the district nominated Eddie Hall to run for BLET president. What started as frustration over the length of negotiations, which began in late 2019 and meant, among other things, deferred raises, soon became about getting time off the job. In 2020, just before the start of the pandemic, Union Pacific implemented a new attendance policy that harshly penalized workers for taking time off time that was already unpaid. In early 2022, BNSF also announced a new policy dubbed High Viz that similarly threatened rail workers' jobs if they didn't keep up with the grueling work schedule. These policies were part of the broader precision scheduled railroading regime that railroad companies have implemented across the industry, cutting jobs and increasing the pressure on those workers who remain. Pierce spoke out publicly about the attendance policies, calling high viz the worst and most egregious, egregious attendance policy ever adopted by any rail carrier. In May, BNSF made some tweaks with Pierce, uh, which Pierce dismissed as little more than fluff. Pressure mounted on leadership to win something in negotiations to addra address quality of life and time off the job. The unions pushed through the Railway Labor Act process through mediation and into a Biden-appointed presidential emergency board. The PEB's recommendation, which traditionally forms the basis for a tentative agreement, didn't include any sick time. Pierce said his priority was to pass the deal despite indignation among members. That doesn't mean a lot of our employees didn't want to strike because they're angry, Pierce told Bloomberg in September. Now our job is to get out there and explain to them what we were able to accomplish that can help improve their lives, help the families, and get the things ratified. See what I'm saying? So they go into a negotiating room and they drop the ball and they come out with a deal where it doesn't get any of the things that their rank and file members wanted as far as the quality of life uh, issues, which are big, huge. That's like probably the most important thing. And the hubris of this guy to say, now I'm going to go back and get this ratified by selling it to my members. Hall was able to win his place on the ballot by securing 5% of the convention delegates in October's nomination, nominating convention. That gave him access to a membership email list, and he started making his case directly. For him, the members had already spoken. It is clear to me that the national membership is dissatisfied with our leadership and the decisions made by them when it comes to a national agreement, wrote Hall. Polls were taken, resulting in over 99% of those that responded instructing our leaders to withdraw from service if an agreement could not be reached on our quality of life issues. However, once all provisions under the Railway Labor Act were exhausted and a legal strike was warranted, our leaders chose to bury their heads in the sand. You will now hear the political posturing and grandstanding on what a great job they did and that is that it is now time for the membership to decide. I believe the membership made their decision a long time ago. Dennis R. Pierce just didn't listen. Pierce has held the BLET's presidency since 2010 and according to Hall has never faced a contested election. This is despite a successful campaign within the union in 2006 to win direct elections of national officers, a straight, I mean, a right members of a mi minority of uh, national unions enjoy. So this is again where we're talking about one member, one vote. So in 2006, the BLET uh, went with direct elections of national officers. 
Though the BLET tentative agreement vote passed with a reported 55% approval, Hall says it was less about the merits of the agreement and more about getting it over with. Members are definitely not happy with leadership, says Hall. This agreement process, it's been so long, many just wanted to get the process over with, so they voted for it. A third of the members didn't even vote. Members we spoke with agreed we knew the outcome with Congress. Some thought the PEB would be enforced. Many just wanted their back pay sooner. Said one 20-year engineer speaking on condition of anonymity for fear of retaliation, there was also a push by the unions to vote yes. They always sold the contract. It's the best we will get, which is what the union says with every contract. What did I just tell you a few minutes ago in this very video? And then they say it in the article that they come back and listen to this quote. It's perfect because it's almost verbatim. He comes back and he goes, there was also a push by the unions to vote yes. Every single cycle, there's a push from the days to vote yes. They always sold the contract. Every single cycle, they sell the contract. It's the best we will get. I hear it all the time, which is what the union says with every contract. It's hilarious because it's exactly right. Ross Gruders, a BLET member uh, and co-chair of Cross Union Railroad Workers United, is hopeful about the results. People wanted to see change within our union. I know a lot of people that want to see change within a lot of unions. People are ready to fight, and we got to get organized in order to do that. That wasn't going to happen under the leadership of Dennis Pierce. No, it was not. No, it was not. These guys that are in office, they're just not ready for the energy, man. Though results won't be officially certified for a few days, Hall is making plans. I'm hoping to get out and listen to the membership. I'm going to be the president who flies to San Antonio, rents a car, goes over to Laredo, to Corpus Christi, up to Austin. I want to see what the membership is saying and try to get the membership involved. We have a union, but they're not involved. Leadership is not out there basically rallying our members. They need that out there, and not once every 10 years. To me, says Hall, this is just where we're getting started. And that's what I want to end on because that's the end of the article. But also, we are just getting started. I'm trying to tell you, the labor movement is revitalized. And many who are in elected office just don't know it because they're in bubbles. And in those bubbles, they're secluded from outside energies from the rank and file. In those bubbles, they get their butt kissed by underlings who are beholden to them for a paycheck. So, of course, they're not going to sit there and be like hey man you know what i'm hearing out here in the streets is this and you should really be doing this it's more like what do you want me to do sir and when you've been in in that bubble for 20 30 years 40 years in this bubble you don't know what to do you don't know what to do you got no clue you're in a bubble you gonna live in that bubble and keep doing the things that you've been doing but it don't work that way you have to evolve you have to be able to change you got to be able to be innovative and I'm sad that right now we just don't have the folks um, forward thinking enough to be innovative. And that we definitely have a bunch of cowardly lions uh, pretending to have a lot of courage, which is funny to me. But whatever. We're going to keep on pressing because, like I told you always, the rank and file is who decides what their union looks like. It's not the people that are in office. They're in office, but they need you to tell them what they need to be doing. To get, in, get, get on them and ask them questions and find out what's going on and ask them to do more they need you they don't listen to me they need you <laughs> anyway let's go remember the fight's not left and right it is up and down it's gonna take solidarity to win always each one teach one get out there and reach one and there could be no union without you and i front and center like subscribe notification bell comment share peace